I've been on Reddit for about two years now, but I just now found this subreddit. After reading a few of the top posts, I realized that what happened to me this summer is a perfect fit here. I haven't written anything in a long time, so sorry if this isn't the most articulate post. This fucked me up for a while, and I'm still not completely okay, but it's easier to cope. It was the middle of summer, and my parents had left for the weekend to go to our house in Cape Cod. It's about a two hour drive away, so it's no big deal for them to leave me alone for a few days. My mom had made some pulled pork and pasta for me to heat up whenever, and I had some money if I wanted to order a pizza. Things were all good. The first night I was alone, I stayed up until 3 in the morning playing Xbox, so I woke up pretty late the next day. I checked my phone when I woke up and saw that it was a little past 1. I had made some plans to play street hockey with my friends at 3, so I threw myself out of bed and stumbled into the shower. I take really long showers, so when my parents are gone, I go pretty mental. I was in there for about 45 minutes on my phone, scrolling through Reddit and Twitter and whatnot. When I heard the front door open, the bathroom is directly up the stairs from the back door, and the thing is pretty loud when it opens and closes. I immediately froze, since obviously, I was supposed to be alone. I waited for about two minutes, ears trained in, trying to hear anything else. Nothing. I figured it was just the wind, or maybe my parents were home early, so I turned off the shower, wrapped my towel around myself, and slowly walked down the stairs to check it out. So the stairs to the kitchen are pretty tight and walled in. I can't see into the kitchen when I walk down. Even though my house is old as shit, and each step on the stairs makes a super loud creak, I still took my time and tried to be as quiet as possible. I probably took around 45 seconds walking down all 12 of the stairs. So when I got to the second to last stair, right before I could see around the corner into the kitchen, I took a little breath to compose myself. In my mind, I knew I was being stupid. There obviously wasn't anything in the kitchen. There's no way I wouldn't have heard another noise, and there's no reason for them to still be in the kitchen, even if there were burglars or something in the house. After sort of mentally chastising myself for being such a wuss, I sort of chuckled to myself for being so stupid, and just normally walked the last two stairs and turned the corner into the kitchen. Standing about two feet away from me, in the middle of my kitchen, is a man staring straight at me, perfectly still, with a massive smile across his face, just staring at me. The thing I remember most vividly wasn't his face, or his smile, but his arms. They weren't just at his side. He held them in the strangest, most abnormal position I've ever seen. They were where one would normally hold their arms, but he had rotated them to the point where they were almost completely reversed, as well as lifting them up and a little behind him. I don't know why I remember this so much, but it's just the most demonic, abnormal position I've ever seen. Honest to God, I think I almost had a heart attack right there. Looking back, I can realize how fucking creepy this situation was, but in the moment, I just took a step towards him and punched him as hard as I could in the jaw, sort of half slapping, half pushing him towards the ground. And the second I connected, I beelined up the stairs, dropping my towel in the kitchen with my heart beating out of control. I fucking sprinted into my room and locked the door behind me. I quickly put a chair up against the doorknob like you see on TV. Almost without thinking, I called 911 too, and nearly in tears, told the operator what had happened. As I sat on the floor of my room, in practically the fetal position, staring at the door and praying that a cop would be here soon, I noticed the light coming from the gap between my door had stopped. 
the fucker was standing right outside. There's no words to describe the feeling I had. I was paralyzed with fear. Watching the shadow across the bottom of the door shift in tiny ways. I stayed balled up, staring at the gap, praying the man would go away for what seemed like an hour. All the while, the 911 operator was asking, Hello, sir. Are you there? Hello? I didn't want to make a noise, and even if I wanted to move my arms to bring the phone to my mouth, I don't think I could have. Eventually, the light returned to the gap, and I heard the faintest of footsteps, slowly creaking the wooden floorboards as he walked down the hall. It was silent for minutes as I just sat there, curled up, unable to even speak. At this point, I heard banging on the front door and the sound of two officers entering my home. I finally felt safe, and I opened the door to the two of them standing there and almost cried. Nowadays, my parents don't even leave me home alone anymore, thank God, and I check every lock in the house before going to bed. I still get nightmares occasionally, and my heart starts racing whenever I see someone standing still but I'm doing all right. Even working with sketch artists and a few lineups, the police never found out whoever the fuck was in my house. That sends shivers up my spine every time I look outside, half expecting to see him standing across the street, smiling under a lamppost. I have no idea what he wanted, or who he was, but regardless, let's never meet again. This happened a few years ago to me, when I was still living in my childhood home down in California. I had just inherited my family home, so my cousin decided to move in with my husband and I while she was attending college nearby. My cousin and I were both working at the Lego store at the time, but I only worked mornings, and my husband and cousin worked nights, so there were many nights where I was alone. A couple of weeks before this happened, I had been taking stuff out of my car when I realized a strange brown van with no back windows had parked across the street. As I put the stuff in the trunk, the man in the van started making weird noises at me. I turned to see if I could get a look at his face, but his black giant's baseball cap was pulled down really far. Thinking that he was just a creepy guy, I flipped him off and went back into the house. About two hours later, I went outside to go somewhere, and he was still parked across the street. Not thinking anything of it, I hopped in my car and headed to my friend's house. As I was driving, I looked into my rearview mirror and saw the same brown van following me. I turned on a whole bunch of streets, and he followed me down all of them. I turned onto the road that my father-in-law had lived on and parked, thinking if the guy tried anything, I could just run there and be safe. When I pulled over in front of my father-in-law's house, the van slowly drove by. I looked into the van, and the man put his hand into a gun position and pointed at me, then yelled BANG really loudly. After that, he hauled ass and drove off. Now. I had always been a little leery of staying home alone. My house had always given me the creeps because of how poorly lit it was. When I was alone at night, I usually just stayed in the kitchen because of how bright it was. I was watching a TV show on my computer when all of a sudden, I hear a banging on the front door and the handle jiggling. It startled me for a moment until I looked at the time and saw it was around 10pm and knew that my cousin was going to be coming home from work at about that time. I got up and opened the door, but nobody was on the porch. I shouted my cousin's name, but still no response. I called my cousin's cell, and immediately she was like, Oh hey, I'm on the way home from work right now. Before I could say anything else, there were three extremely loud banks on the door that connected the kitchen and the garage, 
and the knob was shaken violently. I slammed the front door closed, locked and chained it, and ran for my room. My aunt called me, while my cousin called the police and I stayed under a blanket until my cousin arrived. When she came and got me, I was led outside to talk to police. I was trying to explain what had happened, but the officers alongside the back of my house were distracting me. I walked over to where they were, but not one of the officers held me back. They opened the gate and saw that the door to my garage, which we always leave locked, was wide open. All of the officers in the area pulled their guns and went into the garage, but nobody was in there. Afterwards, the police told me it was probably just some kids messing around, but if I ever got scared at home, to just call them and they'd send someone out. About a week later, I was watching something in my living room with my cousin and my husband. As I was passing by the window next to my front door, I realized there was a guy wearing the same baseball cap as the guy in the van, standing outside on the sidewalk and staring at the house. When he noticed me watching, he immediately locked eyes with me and slowly gave me the creepiest smile I had ever seen. I turned and yelled for my husband to go out there, but when I turned around, he was gone. I will say though that the baseball cap in question is really really generic and a lot of Giants fans wear it, so I can't say it was the same exact guy, but I really felt like it was. Three days after that, I was home alone at night again. I was on edge, but trying to ignore it, telling myself that I was going to be okay. I was baking cookies in the kitchen when I heard a knock at my sliding glass door. My whole body tensed up, and I slowly turned towards the door. The lights in the backyard were off, and the kitchen ones were on, so the glare on the window made it impossible to see if someone was outside. Everything was silent for a few seconds before someone banged on the door again. I screamed but felt paralyzed by fear. The person ran on the deck from the sliding glass door to the two windows in the living room and started knocking on them as well. They came back to the sliding glass door to knock and started trying to force open the door. I finally came to my senses at this point, grabbed my keys, and ran outside to my car. I locked myself in and dialed 911. We sold our house not too shortly after that. I still have a hard time staying at home alone, even though I'm two states away now. Let me preface this by saying thank you to the people who developed that creepy smile guy video or else I wouldn't have found this subreddit to share my encounter. Years ago, when I was in second grade, 22 now, my parents, one Monday morning, finally felt confident in allowing me to come home from school by myself and stay home without a babysitter until they came home. That morning, my father gave me the house key, showed me the emergency numbers in the yellow book, and gave me instructions on what to do if stupid things happened, like the house catching on fire. After school that day, I came home, put the key in the door, and walked into my open house. I felt free, and I felt privileged that I was finally a big boy, and that I could now be home on my own. Needless to say, I kinda got caught up in the moment, and ate tons of ice cream while watching Terminator on VHS, since my parents would never let me watch anything over PG-13. Around 5 p.m. that day, I heard the doorbell ring. My dad told me never to answer the door by myself, even if they were home. I walked to our family room, where I could get a good view of who was there. Maybe my dad was getting a package or something, since he always enjoyed ordering things online. But instead, I saw a middle-aged man standing there in a dark black jacket that I'd never seen before. He rang the doorbell again, and I expected him to leave after no one answered. After a third ring, I saw him walk down the steps and just assumed he was leaving. I went back to watching Terminator, 
when I noticed something outside my kitchen window. The man was walking in our backyard for some odd reason. I felt scared for my life since some stranger was on my property now. I ran under the kitchen table and grabbed the cordless phone from the counter and proceeded to call my dad's work number. My dad answered, and I exclaimed how some strange man was in the backyard and was now proceeding to try and open our sliding door. My dad told me to stay where I was and call the neighbors, and he would call 911. I told my dad I loved him, and he said he would call me immediately after he called 911. Before I could call my neighbors, the man was able to somehow open our family room window. I feared for my life at this point, and ran to the bathroom and locked the door to call our neighbors. After about 30 seconds, I heard my neighbor running through our house, shouting my name to see if I was okay. She said she saw no one in the house, and we stayed in the bathroom until the police arrived. The police conducted their investigation, and told us they found some fingerprints that matched a recently released convict, who was previously put in jail for breaking into homes. After that day, my parents didn't leave me without a babysitter until I went to high school. Every week, I wonder what happened. Did he run when he saw someone was in the house? Did my neighbor scare him away if he heard her yelling? Needless to say, after that day, and even after I was allowed to stay home without a babysitter, I never stayed home alone. I was either at a friend's house or an after-school program until my parents came home. And to this day, I still feel unsafe being home alone. What's up guys? Blue Spooky here, as always. I just wanted to thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end. If you liked the video, please feel free to leave a comment, or leave a like if you feel so inclined. If you have any particular stories you'd like me to read, or any particular stories you'd like to send in, links to all of my social media will be in the description below, including my Gmail, Twitter, and Facebook. Go ahead and send me a message on any of those, and I'll try to get back to your message as soon as possible. If you do decide to send in a story, please feel free to include the name that you'd like me to credit you with in the description if I use that story, as well as any particular themes, if the story has any. If you have any constructive criticism, please feel free to leave it in the comments below, as I'm always looking for new ways to improve the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day.